I'm going to test these three used solar panels to find out which of them are still working properly. But so you can learn the various ways of testing solar panels, we're going to test each one differently. I'm going to use a multimeter for this first one. To test a solar panel with a multimeter, all you have to do is prep the multimeter to measure DC voltage and then touch the positive probe to the panel's positive connector and the negative probe to the negative connector. And of course, when you're doing this, the panel should be in direct sunlight and the sky should be clear. Then read your multimeter. Mine read 25.2 volts. Then flip your solar panel over. On the label on the back of your panel, look for the open circuit voltage or VOC. This panel's VOC is 24.3 volts. If your measurement is the same or nearly the same as the VOC, then so far your panel seems to be working properly, but you'll need to measure one other thing before you can be sure. In my case, the measurement is actually greater than the VOC, which might seem strange, but that can happen on cold days like today since a panel's voltage increases as its temperature drops. Regardless, that's a great reading, so we'll move on to the next step. The second thing you need to measure with your multimeter is the short circuit current, or ISC, and to check it, you flip your panel back over and prep your multimeter to measure DC amps. Warning, before you do this, make sure your multimeter's current rating is greater than your panel's ISC. My multimeter has a 10 amp current rating, which is greater than my panel's ISC, so I'm good. If your panel's ISC is greater, you can still test your panel's current using the method that I'll talk about next. For this measurement, I strongly recommend throwing a towel over the solar panel to stop it from generating most of its power. Then again, connect positive to positive and negative to negative. There may be a small spark when you complete the connection, and that's normal. That's why I like covering mine with a towel. Then remove the towel and play around with the panel's angle until you get the highest current reading. If your voltage and current readings are close to the panel's VOC and ISC, then great, your panel is working fine. I got a max of 4.89 amps, which is a little lower than the ISC, but still pretty close. If you're getting a reading that's pretty far off from the ISC, then first do the basic checks. Make sure the panel is clean. Make sure there are no clouds. There's no shade on the panel. Also consider the time of day and time of year that you're testing your panel. Are you testing it at noon on a summer day? Or like me, are you testing it at around 10 a.m. on a winter morning? In my case, the current I'm measuring is so close to the ISC that I'm confident this panel is still working properly. So I'm gonna move on to testing the second solar panel. And while I'm getting that ready, I'll say that if your panel doesn't seem to be working properly, don't panic yet. There are some reasons why that might be the case, which I'll talk about at the end because some of them apply to all of these testing methods. If you couldn't measure your panel's current with a multimeter because the ISC was too high, or you have a panel that's already connected to your solar system, then you can use a clamp meter to test its current. To test solar panels with a clamp meter, the panel needs to be connected to your system. So I quickly connected mine to a simple setup, then grab your clamp meter and turn it to the right current range. Zero it out if needed, and then clamp it around one of the solar panel's wires. Mess around with your panel's angle because it can affect a panel's current output quite a bit. Then compare the max current you got to the solar panel's maximum power current, or IMP. We are not using ISC in this case because the panel is now connected to our system. My panel's IMP is 5.41 amps and my meter's max reading was 5.64 amps, which is a great reading. In this case, the current I measured is greater than the IMP. So, wow, maybe there was some cloud edge effect or something going on at that particular moment. So I know the second panel is working properly. And at this point, you're probably wondering if this method works with both MPPT and PWM charge controllers. So I quickly swapped out my Victron MPPT for a cheaper PWM, and I measured a similar current, actually a little higher even. But what if you wanna know how much power your panel is outputting in watts? Well, to measure wattage, we're gonna move on to the third and final solar panel. Which is not only the most expensive by far, it's also a flexible solar panel, so I'm not sure if it's held up as well as the rigid panels over the years. I also gave it quite a beating when I used it in a solar bike build, but that's a story for another time. For this one, I'm going to measure how many watts it's outputting. So for that, I'll use a DC power meter, which is also sometimes called a watt meter. And because we'll be measuring the panel's power output in real time, for this method, the panel will also need to be connected to your system. You have two options here. You can spend something like $60 to buy a watt meter with MC4 connectors on it already, or you can buy a cheap one for $15 to $20 on Amazon and use an MC4 crimping kit to crimp the connectors on yourself, which is what I ended up doing. 
Once you've got a power meter with the right connectors for your panel, cover it with a towel or turn off your PV disconnect switch if your system has one, and then connect the meter in line between your solar panel and charge controller. Remove the towel and then look at the meter. It is so hard to capture this meter screen in full sun, but if I really adjust the brightness up, you can make out that it says 122 watts. And I didn't capture it on camera, but it got up to 130 watts when I played with the angle a bit. And this number you can compare to the panel's wattage, which is listed on the label as the rated power or Pmax, which for this panel is 170 watts. 130 watts is around 75% of 170 watts, which might sound bad, but that's actually pretty standard output from a solar panel. Keep in mind, I'm also testing this in winter. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this third panel is also working well. And yes, if you have just one solar panel connected to a charge controller that tracks power output, you could also monitor your solar panel's wattage that way. Okay, but what if you test your solar panel and you measure a voltage or current or wattage that is way less than expected? Before I get into these reasons, please just double triple check the basics. Make sure your panel has no shade on it at all. Make sure there aren't any clouds in the sky. Even thin cloud coverage like this can reduce a panel's output and make sure your panel is clean. If you've done that, now we can discuss some other reasons. If your panel's connected to your system, then it might have abnormally low output because your battery is mostly charged. In that case, the charge controller might be throttling the amount of power it's pulling from the solar panel. You can very easily test if this is the case by just turning on a load and draining your battery a bit and seeing how your solar panel's output responds. Second, your solar array might be wired together in a way that's reducing your panel's output. Now, I'm not gonna get into all that because it's worth an entire video, but just know that if you're wiring different solar panels together, then based on the way you do that, it can affect their outputs. The solution here is very simple. Disconnect your panel from any other panels so you're only testing one panel at a time. Third, consider how old your solar panel is. A solar panel's power output declines slowly over time. So if it's an old solar panel, such as a 10 year old solar panel, then that might be part of the reason why it's outputting less than expected. However, if you're seeing a large discrepancy in output, it's probably not age, which is solely to blame. If you check all that and take all that into account and your panel still isn't working properly, then your panel or maybe even some of your downstream equipment might be damaged or defective. The panel could be cracked or have hot spots or delamination. There are a lot of different scenarios and it's hard to troubleshoot all of them. So if your panel doesn't seem to be working properly, then maybe leave a comment and let us know what numbers you're seeing and we can all try to help you figure out what could be happening. But for me, thankfully, I now know all three of these panels are working just fine. Hopefully this was helpful. Get subscribed for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.